Hi YouTube, it's Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and welcome to the Battle of the Chuckas. Today we're going to look at three very particular pairs of boots. These are three different types of material and three different types of construction. So let's jump in. Here we have um, the Allen Edmonds Chucka. This is uh, a Chucka from Mastra. Um, I believe it has a leather sole, Goodyear welted uh, combination heel with a dovetail. Uh, it has a split reverse welt, and then that's where all the complication ends, and it's really two pieces of leather. Well, maybe four pieces of leather, depending on how this is all put together. But you have a piece here, a piece here, you've got your vamp here, and then you have a seam along the back right there, okay? Uh, so very, very uh, simple construction, uh, but a uh, complicated sole. It's completely unlined, um, and here we go. Now this is a handmade shoe. This is a Heinrich Dinkelager uh, boot that is in, uh, now this is, that's a two eyelet chukka, meaning that there are two eyelets here. This is a four eyelet chukka, okay? And uh, this is a cap toe uh, with perforated, so it's got the uh, broguing and a medallion. Uh, this is a closed channel uh, Goodyear welt, but this is hand welted. Okay, it has fudging along the outside. It also has a split reverse welt and uh, made with one, two, three, four, five pieces of leather. Uh, and uh, this is fully lined, if you look on the inside there. Um, and again, this is Heinrich Dinkelacker. This is made 100% by hand. Uh, look at that nail work. That's typical Heinrich Dinkelacker, so we'll get into that. And then lastly, we have the Luff and Tongue uh, Cole, and this is made out of Utah calf. So where this is smooth leather, this has got a grain to it. Uh, super, super soft. Uh, there really isn't a way to describe how soft this leather is, uh, but it has this very interesting uh, grain, and it's not like a regular pebble grain. Uh, this is really close. Not quite exact, but it's close, closer to a hatched grain. So um, now this has got a rubber sole. Um, so a single sole that has a split reverse welt uh, made differently. This is machine welted. And you can see that here on the outside and on the bottom uh, with the rubber heel as well. This is also a two eyelet chugga. So we've got two four, two, we have, this is lined, this is lined, that is unlined, and this is made by machine, 100% made and sewn by hand, and this is also made by machine. So, which one is better? A lot of it depends on what you're really looking for, um, how you wanna look at it, but let's, let's break it down into some things that are easy to understand, right? First things first, look how low the edge of this chukka is compared to this one. There's quite a big difference there just in height alone. So what does that matter? Now imagine that you're wearing this. What is right here on the boot? That's your ankle bone. So this is really soft, it's unlined, um, and you have uh, no rubbing basically on the ankle bone. Whereas if you look at this one, with a very high uh, piece, that's going to rub on your ankle more. And then here, let's look at this one side by side, keeping the sole at the same height, that's even higher. So the luff and tongue rubs against your ankle even more. This um, rubs against your ankle a little. And again, and maybe it's, I think that uh, the Heinrich Dinkelacker actually doesn't go against your ankle because what you have to do is you have to measure it from the sole where where the insole starts. Now you can see this actually is flat and it goes up higher here. So very different fit as well. And that's because this has four eyelets versus the two. So again, this is not rehearsed. This is not edited. This is just items as I see them. Now from a style standpoint, very easy, plain toe, cap toe. Uh, this is plain toe. 
Uh, the suede is obviously less formal. Uh, this, I was able to put a higher shine on it, so the high shine makes it a little bit more formal, but the cap toe makes it most formal of all. The grain actually does decrease the formality substantially. Uh, and so the color, least formal, medium, most formal. Brown, dark brown is almost as formal as black. So now let's look at the actual materials themselves. The Utah calf, very, very soft feels really good, but what is this lining like? This lining is soft. It feels, honestly, this feels like lambskin, uh, which is which is nice. You can look at the stitch density here on the inside. It's pretty well put together. Stitch density on the outside, pretty dense. Uh, so this is a, um, you know, a good lining. Here we have the Heinrich Dinkelacker, these are the made by hand shoes. And when you look at the lining, this lining is ultra soft. Uh, this is, I don't know whether this is lamb or whether this is calf, but it feels like really good belly, belly, <laughs> belly leather. And when I say belly leather, it's because it's a little bit looser grain, uh, but not to the point where it's, uh, it's bad or anything but it just feels like super, super soft, uh, super flexible. You could almost wear this barefoot and, and not have a problem. Now we say that, and then we take a look here at these Allen Edmonds. Now, what's nice about unstructured chuckas, okay, let's take a look at that leather. This looks like just like a, a grain leather. So this is actually a reverse skin suede so they this is the smooth leather that would be here and they simply give you the rough outside of it super super soft it's very soft on the outside but this is very soft on the inside as well i have worn these without socks and they are perfectly comfortable okay? kind of feel like you're wearing leather socks it's not uh if your feet perspire like mine it's not something you can wear so you probably need to wear no-show socks but it uh it, it all depends on what you're, uh, what you're going for. So now if we look at just pure quality, we look at the stitch density here, your stitch density on your Allen Edmonds, uh, you can feel the stitching along the edge of the sole, which is uh, fairly typical of Allen Edmonds. Now these are not factory seconds or factory firsts. These are actually ones that were damaged um, and the damage is in the form of a cut, which is right here. Okay, and so uh, they, they were cut pretty good. There's a little bit of a hole on this side it goes through goes through to this. So these are, are, are considered no warranty shoes. Uh, I was able to get them, you know, off of eBay, uh, basically a salvage. But uh, still, you know, from a construction standpoint, the, the main parts of the construction are the same. We're certainly not going to discuss the cut when it comes to quality that I knew that that was there coming in. Uh, this stitch density... It's quite a bit cleaner than Allen Edmonds. It's a lot denser than Allen Edmonds. Uh, so, um, you know, and Le Fintang, made in Spain. Uh, Allen Edmonds, are, are, those are made in Wisconsin. So let's take a look at these. Now, Heinrich Dinkelecker is made in Budapest. Take a look at that stitch density. Now, this is all done by hand. So you'll see every now and then you can might see a stitch that's a little bit longer than the others, but for the most part, you've got pretty good symmetry. Uh, you've got good uh, thing. And then what they call this along the outside of the edge, when they pr put that pattern into the edge of the welt like this, they call that fudging. And what's difficult about that is that they actually sew the welt on in the fudging. So they do the fudging after they do the stitches. So you can't really see the stitches. Even this close up, it's very hard to see where they are. You can kind of see the line as you go through there, all right? But then this side is completely closed, so you cannot see it at all. And you can see they put nails here and there, and then they have the, uh, you know, they do some decorative work on the sole as well. Nails at the toe as well. So um, Heinrich Dinklocker is known for their nail work and then for uh, a certain last, I, I believe it's the loser and last, they actually put in uh, what looks like a Triumph toe plate, but a very, very big one, so they're big shoes. Uh, they also are known as having a triple sole. These are a double sole. 
um, actually these are a single sole, if I look at it, that weld is nearly as thick as the sole. And that sole, you can see, is also a very dark color. That dark color on the sole uh, is very similar to like a, a JR sole, although I don't believe that they are. But they are stacked leather heels, very good. And uh, certainly no issue with wear. Allen Edmonds, single weld, this is their standard sole. Um, very light shoe, by the way, as well. And then here, this is a standard uh, leather sole. If you look at that welt, that welt is much, much thinner than your hand welted welt. And that's probably because the hand welted welt, they have to actually work and manage by hand. Uh, so it's a little different. So again, we're looking at the shoes. Um, at the end of the day, I'm going to say from a comfort standpoint, the Online chukkas are obviously the most comfortable. They feel kind of like you're wearing socks. The Utah calf is very, very soft, but in my opinion, I cannot beat these Heinrich Dinkelockers. The, the detail is there. Now you'll notice that they have, this is a um, almost like a pulled leather where it, or like a um, may even be something like a kudu where the, the leather gets a little scuffed and uh, holds some of that scuffing as part of the texture, okay? You could see it, it's pretty subtle, but it's kind of like wrinkles. They don't look bad here, okay? Uh, I, and I really like it. I mean, it's kind of a distressed leather, uh, but uh, I really find that the uh, quality of the Heinrich Tinkelacker is superb. Uh, but the quality of all three shoes, intrinsically outside the cut on the Allen Edmonds, uh, are just fantastic. I think that the way that you uh, feel about them is uh, is all about you know, in the details and what you like. I think the construction here with the four pieces, the stitch density here is very good. The welting is very good. Uh, I wore these about half the day today and uh, they felt really comfortable uh, the whole time I was wearing them, except for the rub on the ankle. And I will say that that rub on the ankle is probably worse today uh, because this is only the second day I've worn them. And I, I, I believe that that will start to wear um, wear in pretty well. So that's my take. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy and I'm out. Have a great day.